So I have a film uh, in dramatic competition at Sundance called Clemency. It's a drama set in a prison mainly, um, and it's about kind of the psychological toll that executions take on a prison warden. And the movie is really about the warden's kind of psyche and life and emotional life leading up to a scheduled execution. This story is really about the people that work in the prison. And for them, it's just their life. It's, just their, it's, it's their workplace, it's their office. A modern for-profit prison is extraordinarily bland and mundane. They're just concrete boxes, and there's very little attention paid to any sort of architecture or even paint. From a lighting perspective, we really, in the prison, um, we tried to keep all of our lighting either motivated by the overhead fluorescence in that kind of, to, in that kind of you know, nine to five office world, and also uh, windows. We had a lot of window light. I lit the movie almost entirely from outside. And as the kind of tension ratchets up and the story gets tighter and tighter and the characters feel a little more trapped, we come around, we hardly ever shoot at windows anymore, and things are a little darker and a little more constrained and a little tighter on the, on the faces. Something we were very intentional about was staying away from romanticized brick and towers and you know stone kind of prisons, you know, like swinging tungsten pendant lamps in the halls kind of look that a lot of prison stories have. You know what I mean? They're very, very hollow, emotionally empty spaces. Uh, and we were really trying to be true to that and capture that. My name is Eric Bronco. Uh, I grew up in the Bronx, New York. Um, I got into cinematography actually through acting, which is probably not a uh, common occurrence. Uh, I used to act as a kid, ton, like tons of plays and off-Broadway stuff in New York, and then uh, wanted to transition into making movies and started making movies with my buddies. And my intention was to be kind of like a you know, writer, director, actor, and realized I had no one to hold the camera. And so <laughs> I had to fall back from acting uh, and I got behind the camera and then realized I like, totally fell in love with, uh, with cinematography. You know, I was a grip and then I jumped over to electric side and I was a best electric for a long time and then a gaffer for a while. And, uh, and then was eventually able to make the jump to DP full time. But my, my education was definitely like indie film in New York with no money, making the best of it. <laughs> A huge part of my approach for this film was, was not having stands in the room. Um, pretty much everything was either overhead, rigged overhead or coming in through windows, um, which was important because we shot in a real prison. So the space was so imbued with that history and emotion kind of trapped in the space already when we showed up. I wanted the actors to feel that when they got there for the first time as well. So it was important to me that they didn't feel like they had to had to navigate, you know, a sea stand forest to get to the, their marker. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted them to walk into a room and see a space and know that this was their space to perform. I didn't want to waste time doing huge turnarounds. You know what I mean? Obviously, we're moving fast. We shot two cameras a lot of, for a lot of the stuff. My approach was about giving the actors the space to do what they needed to do and know that I would have their back and not be in their way um, if they wanted to make a choice. You know, if, this, if we blocked a scene and shot listed a scene with them sitting and then they got there and they said, you know what, I really feel like I'd be standing. That's, you know, that's a reframe rather than a relight. So we, we start the movie uh, pretty wide and we end it pretty tight, which is a combination of, of being further back and being on a wider lens. And then by the end of the movie, we're in much closer on a tighter lens. The movie is kind of like a ratcheting of, of tension. You know what I mean? So as, as the, the world kind of collapses around these characters, we definitely tried to show that as well with our framing. By the last few minutes of the movie, we're in close up. Where I mean, everything is in here. Well, I fought for anamorphic on this one. So we did a mini with Cook Anamorphics. The director and I did a ton, a ton, a ton of tests, looked at a bunch of lenses, and she really responded well to the Cooks. So I let her kind of make that choice on the lensing front. If I'm shooting spherical, uh, I usually go to either super speeds or, or master primes. Um, like if I need a cleaner, more precise look, I'll go for the masters. But if it's something that doesn't need to be so precise, uh, I'll usually go with a set of older super speeds or something. This is my first feature sh that I shot in living in LA. The, I guess the biggest challenge of shooting in LA was basically building a crew from scratch. In looking for my crew uh, for this movie, I was really looking for people who would not only be excellent technicians, but also be uh, creative collaborators. I feel like film is such a collaborative medium. Uh, I want everyone on my crew to have a voice because they're only gonna make it better. Um, 
I feel a lot of times that communication kind of breaks down, especially in like the kind of hustle of a quick indie feature. Um, you don't have much time for kind of like on-site conversation. And so I was really intentional about finding people who could have excellent ideas, communicate them quickly and efficiently, and really just elevate the project. My scouting process, I guess, um, I like to have more space, more time in the space uh, beforehand. Uh, I take a lot of pictures. Uh, I've recently, I've recently, uh, on the last two projects I've done, um, narrative projects, I've taken to doing my scout photos on black and white film. I find that I'm a little more intentional about it. It's a little less just like hosing it down and looking at it later. And it's a little more, at least for me, kind of being in the moment and being aware uh, of what the light is doing, what the space is doing. And then I try and do black and white um, because that really gives me a sense of what the, what the existing light is, what the existing contrast is, um, and that kind of stuff. Obviously, I'm also taking like a thousand pictures on my phone and things like that, but, uh, but I try and get in there with some, with some film stills also. Starting with a feature, or, a or even a shorter narrative project, or you know, a, a, a show or anything like that, it's really, the world is open, it's a script, and you gotta go from there. Uh, whereas, on a commercial, once the DP's brought in, there, there have been conversations with the agency and with the client about what they're going for. About and so then my job, it's, you know, kind of becomes about fitting that puzzle together and hopefully elevating what they already had. Um, rather than a narrative project, which is about coming up with something basically from, from Go. Commercial and short form work is, I mean, it's still kind of the testing ground for, for what you can do on a feature. Obviously, uh, commercials, there's pressure, there's, there's this, there's that, but choices, I've, I don't feel like choices are made as quickly on commercials as they are on like very small indies. And so I feel like strengthening that muscle, how to make kind of like informed choices that work really, really, really does strengthen narrative work um, because, you know, you're already in that, in that you don't like, if, if something goes horribly wrong, you don't panic because you know that it's gonna get solved and you just need to figure out a way to solve it. And you know what I mean? And kind of lead from the front and calmly be like, let's assess and let's do, <laughs> yeah, let's do this. I think my advice is not technical advice or, or career advice, but my advice, I mean, I think, I think one of the most important things you can do working in film uh, is to uh, kind of maintain and recognize like your gratitude and your joy to work in film. Uh, I think, you know, it's such a grind. The days are so long and they're so hard. And, you know, the pressure is intense. Um, and I think if you can, if you can kind of put that aside for a second and pause and just kind of get back to why you're there uh, and, and remember how badly you wanted to be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that's, that's the best thing you can do because that's going to inform your work. And if you, you know, if you can, if you can translate that feeling into your work, you're good. <laughs>